And so I want to read to you Psalm 15. The Lord brought this up to me this morning. And um, I love this psalm. And so I'm going to read it to you out of two versions. But it says in, in Psalms 15, 1, Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Who may dwell in your holy hill? He who walks uprightly, works righteousness, speaks the truth in his heart. He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend in whose eyes a vile person is despised, but he who honors those who fear the Lord, he who swears to his own hurt and does not change, he who does not put his money at usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent, he who does these things will never be moved. Let me read it to you out of the Amplified. Lord, who shall dwell temporarily in your tabernacle? Who shall dwell permanently on your holy hill? He who walks and lives uprightly and blamelessly, who works rightness and justice and speaks and thinks the truth in his heart. That's really important because the Bible says that a wise man has a teachable spirit and we have to be truthful. See, we, you know, we can, we, it's easy to blame everybody for your issues, but then you have to get to a point where you have to look introspectively and say, okay, what, who's the common denominator here? I have to look at my heart. And I have to see, what do I have to change? He's, God has given us the ability to, to have breakthrough. We heard the songs. We can, we can make that change. The Bible says in Philippians, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. So that means I can change. That means my mindset of a negative mindset can change. We had to work on it. I mean, you know, my mom, wonderful woman, loved her dearly, but she came from Italy. She came from the war. She, she lived during the war, had a lot of fear, had a lot of anger, had, you know, and, and just the things that would come out of my mother's mouth, as some of you know. Um, you know, but we were raised with that and, and, and very negative. Like if you say, you know, I'm, I'm really trusting that this will happen. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Thanks for your vote of confidence, mom, you know. You know, if you, you know, anything that you, you spoke about it, and, and her in her mindset, like she thought, well, I don't want you to be disappointed. Right. So, right. Haven't we all thought that? So I don't want to encourage you too much because if you're disappointed, then, you know, then you'll get through this thing because I didn't say, yeah, you're going to do it. I'm really trusting. I'm really trusting that the Lord's going to break through in your life. That would have been nice. Right. But, but she meant well. And I know my mother would have you know, like a disclaimer, like Lisa's last week, my mother would have done anything for my sisters and I, but you know, that's what we were raised up with. But you know, it, it gets ingrained in you. And, and it typically, you know, like if we would call my mother, hey mommy, what, what happened to you? I'm just calling to say hello, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, you know, right? I mean, if we, you know, we called her at a certain time, we're good, mom, just saying hello. But, but it's always that negative thought, right? You always think the worst right? What? Fear factor. Fear factor. And so and a lot of times, I mean, I had to, Lord, I know you've got this. Lord, I know that you will supply all our needs according to your riches and glory. God's got this building. God's got our monies. I'm not concerned. I mean, we, you know, we have to do our due diligence, but God owns all the gold and silver. <laughs> you know, that, he's got it. So, you know, it's a heart issue. So we need to say, Lord, where's my heart at? How are you doing in this season with what you're saying? Because we have to get through the worry. We have to get through. He says, don't worry. We have to get through the fear. We have to get through the, you know, the anger, the criticalness, the sarcasm. Wait until you see what sarcasm means. So, you know, so one of the things that we're going to do that I'm going to encourage you is to go on a word fast. And honestly, I think a food fast is easier. <laughs> so what I did was I, I have uh, over 100 scriptures here that I'll give out later, or actually you can just come up and get yourself, and uh, scriptures on, on the power of our tongue and our mouth. These are, this wasn't the whole Bible. This is only 100 scriptures. And so if you can take this, and for 21 days we're going to do this, in Jesus' name we will do this, and, and, and speak life. Here are scriptures prophesy over your life prophesy over your family prophesy over your whatever situation it is your listen there are people here at businesses and i'm telling you prophesy life over your businesses 
prophesy life, call those things in. It's, it's, yes, we have strategy and we want to do great things to draw people in, but dedicate it to the Lord. Pray to the Lord. Hear, get the scriptures according to the word. Because the Lord delights in, certain, in, in, in every one of the, uh, the people to prosper, right? All right, so we have to learn to discern. We have to uh, learn when to be quiet, learn when to, you know, I, I really feel like a lot of times, you know, for most of us, we won't be talking much if we're going to be watching a lot of the words we're saying because a lot of it's empty chatter. Really, I'm serious, right? So um, our tongue in James 3, 6 says it's a fire. It can create or cause a fire. And then the other thing about our mouth, there's a scripture in Psalm 81, 10 that says, open wide thy mouth and I will fill it. And when I was looking this up in the treasury of David, this is what it said, that when we open up when that expression, well, think about our mouth. There, it's the expression of breath, right? So I was thinking of the breath of Holy Spirit. All right, we have Holy Spirit in us. And so think about some of the things you would be saying. Would Holy Spirit say that? Right? right? So we, we want our mouth to become a powerful expression of the Holy Spirit. But in Psalm uh, 81, 10, it says, Open wide the mouth and I will fill it. And some of the things that it said that it implies warmth and fervency in prayer. To open the mouth is, in effect, to open your heart. We may be said to open our mouths wide when our affections are quick and lively and there is a correspondence between the feelings of your heart and the requests of your lips or when we really pray and not merely seem to do so. God says to his people, open your mouth and I'll fill it. And this statement also implies several things, dependency, faith, trust, and active obedience. Think about it. When we're opening up our mouth unto the Lord, we're not cursing him. I mean, some might be, but I mean, we're, we're worshiping, we're praising the Lord, we're thanking him. You know, the Bible says to learn to be content in whatever state we're in, right? And so a lot of times we're in stinky situations. And so I said to the Lord, all right, you know, Lord, you know, I'm very practical. How do I get that happiness, uh, you know, that, that thing? And he said to me, it, it's, I, he said, listen, you're going to have afflictions in life. Life happens, right? I mean, we've been around the block and then some, we know that it's not always so wonderful. And so the thing is, he says, but if you keep your eyes fixed on me, in Philippians, it says, think on whatsoever is pure and holy and of good report and lovely. He says, think on these things. When you're meditating, when you're looking at things and you keep it through the, the flesh eyes, right? Not through the spirit eyes, through the spirit of what the Lord says, we get disheartened. We get depressed. Our open wide, what are we saying? He said, open wide your mouth. He goes, I'll fill it. We'll open wide our mouth with the rejoicing in the Lord, whether you feel like it or not. I don't feel like it all the time, but you, 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 you know, you put your flesh, your flesh down. You, you, you don't allow your your flesh to over, to override your, your spirit, man. And so, um, you know, God is faithful. He, he provides. In Ephesians 4.29, it says, Let no unwholesome word proceed out of your mouth, only that which is good, for building up that it may give grace to its listeners. Hey, listen, that doesn't mean you don't think it either. So what happens is a lot of times you're like, well, I'm not saying it, but you're telling the person off in your mind, you know. But the Lord, you know, right? <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, really? And so... Um, you know, but that's the thing. I said, Lord, I want to get to that place where, you know, when I look at that person and not think about smacking them, right? The, like the spirit of smack rises up. For some of you who don't know me, it's not that I'm so violent. It's just that that's just my personality. You, you know, you want to just give them a smack. But it's like, Lord, help me to see people the way you see them. Now, let me say this. Jesus got aggravated with the religious people, right? I mean, he just, over, he threw the tables over. I mean, he, he got in their face. It's that religious spirit that puts people down, that tries to put a cap on people, that tries to take you out, smothers the life of God that he doesn't like. Now, that doesn't mean we have a right to go around treating people that way. But what he wants us to understand is our words, our, the, the, the words that are coming out of our mouth are so vital to us in this season. There always was, but I want to encourage you, consider not the former things of old. Consider not where you've been, the disappointments that you've been. It's a new chapter. You can't, just don't allow that to hold you back. Don't allow your words 
to align with those thoughts because it really will hinder you. You don't want to have an ungrateful. Think about how many of us have said, especially with this generation, how entitled, right? We think they are. Half of us, like, right? Amen, sister. Uh, half of us would have had our behinds beat by our parents if we acted like some of them, right? I mean, my mother would have pulled my hair from clear across the kitchen and she would have been arrested. But, you know, listen, <laughs> it's the way it is now. You're calling evil good and good evil. I'm not condoning abuse. But what I am condoning is discipline. I mean, uh, what I'm encouraging is that there's dishonor, there's disrespect. People use the F word, F bombs, like it's nothing. Christians, it's not good. He said, let no evil or corrupt communication come out of your mouth. There's a line, and it's up to the adults in, with respect, because it works both ways with respect. And I'm not talking about being demeaning or dishonoring either to the, other, to the opposite, I mean, to the younger generation. But there hasn't been, I don't see too much respect. I don't, when I'm on a train or I'm on a bus or I'm in the airport, I see all these kids sitting down. They see older people. They don't get up to let them stand. That's disrespect. You know, so, I mean, we have to get back to that. That's up to the parents to teach that. It's not okay that anything goes. It doesn't go. It's not just anything goes. There is a holy fear of the Lord that has to be released and that people have to understand about the honor and the glory of God. It's not, it's not church lady. It's not being religious. It's honor. It's respect. Don't you all like being respected and honored? I do. I think little kids need to be honored and respected. It's not just adults. I mean, we all. It's not right to demean them and, and shame them or smack them in front of people. It's not, I'm not saying that. It's just that we have to get back to the Bible. We have to get back to the basics of honor. But this is the season, the decade of the mouth. And that mouth, uh, all of our mouths, Lord, you know, I said, Lord, put a watch at my lips and a guard at my mouth. Lord, show me. Or that temptation when we want to just blurt out stuff. Just watch your heart. But see, again, out of the abundance, when you're in his presence, when you're in prayer, that honestly, it changes. It helps you. Because God knows our frame. He knows what we're made up of. He's not like, oh, my God, she has an evil thought. He's not shocked. He knows who we are. But see, that's why I've been saying for a while, God is releasing a prayer anointing. An end time, he's raising up an end time prayer army. Well, why? It's our mouth. We have to pray. We need to decree. I feel like that's all combined in here, that we have to understand the power of our prayers. Why aren't some prayers getting answered? Is there a mixture? Who can ascend the hill of the Lord? Those with clean hands and a pure heart. What's going on? What's coming out of your mouth? Are you saying one thing and then doing another thing? Are you blessing the Lord and cursing your, your parents or cursing your leaders or cursing your boss? What's going on? See, that's what we all have to check our hearts. You know, I, the Lord told me, he said, you don't like certain people in the political arena. He said, but I love them. Believe it or not, I love them. And he said, I said, ugh. So the ones, you know, <laughs> I said, Lord. He goes, I love them. He said, and I want you to pray for them. Have you prayed for them? I'm like, no, I have not. I, well, he knows our heart. We might as well be honest, right? I said, no, I haven't. He goes, I want you to pray for them. I said, I didn't think of that. <laughs> I will pray for them. 